All right, for this video, I'll be working through question two of the 2019 mechanics exam. Right, oh, can we see that? Yes, we can. The teams are waiting for a second half of the game. While waiting, the referee swings her whistle in a horizontal circle above her, her, her head. Each rotation takes 1.4 seconds. The metal whistle is a mass of 40 grams. Um, and it's swung in a circle of radius, what, half a meter. Show that the speed of the whistle is 2.24 meters. Um, so in your formula sheet, this is like year 11, velocity equals distance over time. Yeah, the distance around a whole circle is just two pi r divided by the time to get around the circle, which is just gonna be two pi times, what's the radius? 0 0.5 divided by how long it take to do a loop? Uh, 1.4 seconds. 1.4 and that equals 2.243 meters per second, which is 2.24 um, meters per second, like it says. Yay, we got it right. 2.24, and just leave it like that, meters per second. Um, pretty sure when you do this, if you don't have this formula, then this working, then the numbers put in, if you miss any of these steps, you don't get the achieved part. I wasn't on the panel for this one, but this is like from like, from marking part, like past papers uh, for NZQA. Yep. Frustrating, I know. Right. By determining the horizontal forces on the whistle, explain why it continues to move in a circular motion at constant speed. So this whole idea comes under the branch of, it, this comes under centripetal forces. It comes under circular motion, but the force involved here, the force involved is actually tension, because um, it's a string. But because it's moving around in a circle, that tension it's always pointed towards the center of the circle. So it's a center pointing force in Latin. That means like the Latin word for that is centripetal, centra meaning center pointing, pedal meaning pointing. Right, so in your formula sheet, you have FC, so the center pointing force is equal to MV squared over R. And that is just gonna be a simple substitution. Uh, 0 0.04, cause there are a thousand grams in a kilogram, there's 40 grams, that's the mass, times, what do we get? 2.24 squared, and we divide that by 0 0.5, and that equals 0 0.4 newtons, so 0 0.40 newtons. There you go, because it's one. Um, right, and explain why it continues to move in a circular motion at constant speed. So I'll just pause and then like write the full answer and then explain. Right, so I see the tension force is always 90 degrees to the velocity, which, con which constantly changes its direction, but not speed. And then I just put this tension force is a centripetal force. I'm pretty sure that answers what I'm trying to, like it answers the question. Um, maybe there could be more to it. I've checked the mark schedule, which is also pretty vague. Um, from experience, when I mark these questions, what I'm looking for is tension force. If you just put, if, like, so here we go. If people put the centripetal force is always 90 degrees to the velocity, which constantly changes the direction but not at speed, a lot of the times it would mark down from, um, I would mark that down from merit to achieved because that's not determining the horizontal forces, that's just you being really vague and not knowing that it's a tension force. Um, so that's just like a small side note to I don't know, think about, I suppose. Um, determine, uh, the speed of the whistle is reduced to one meters per second. Determine the size of the new horizontal force on the whistle and explain the likely result, reducing the speed on the motion of the whistle. Oof, right. So the new force, we'll I'll just do it quick, quickly. FC equals MV squared over R. Um, I'll just plug the numbers in my calculator. And as you can see, that gives me 0 0.08 equals 0 0.08 Newtons. And explain the likely result of uh, reducing the speed of the motion on the whistle. Hmm, interesting what they're probably gonna go for, because this is horizontally going around your head. Um, so I would dare say, like in reality, the, the whistle would dip. Um, so like the, the whistle wouldn't have, there'd be more, how do I put it? Like if you ever do this, the whistle actually just starts falling down. You can never get the whistle to go completely horizontal. That's like mathematically impossible and physically impossible. Um, but it would dip down quite a bit. 
So what I'm gonna say is I'll write out like my answer and then I'll just like discuss exactly what I've said. Right, so I've said the tension force has now decreased. This would cause the whistle to drop down a bit, decreasing its radius. And I wanna draw like a quick sketch of this. Here would be the original like whistle, like that there. And what would happen is now the, like this is to be the I'll dotted line for the new whistle, same length, uh, straight line actually, straight length. However, this is a new radius. This is gonna be R prime, and this is just gonna be R. And we can see that R prime is definitely smaller than R. So we can see that the radius would have decreased. And you can go get a string and whirl it around your head and you'll see that this is actually the case when you slow it down. Right. Last question. What do we got? The team is waiting on the sideline. Two players sit on the bench as shown. Bench is 1.5 meters long, has a mass of 10 kgs. Each player has a mass of 60 kgs. How convenient. Player one is 0.25 meters from the end. B is uh, from oh, all right. Player one is 0.25 meters from support B. Oh yeah. Player two is 0.6 meters from support B. Right, draw labeled forces showing all that labeled arrows showing all the forces acting on the bench. Right, I'm not really sure what they're gonna go for, but you need a ruler. First and foremost, find roughly where the center of the bench is. Yeah, that'll do. And we're gonna go have, that'll be uh, F, G. And then we have this fellow here. I'm gonna have him from the center of mass. Yeah, and then it's gonna be also F, G. This fellow here from the center of his mass-ish. They're the same size, so they should be the same weight. F, G, you're gonna have support force here. We call this F, B, because that's what NCA typically likes. And this is gonna be your other support force, F, A. And technically speaking, you have support forces in here and here, but from experience, they never really care about these forces here. If this is asking, it's gonna be a torque question, it's gonna have balance torques, so balance torques, equilibrium, yada, 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 you just need these forces to figure things out. Um, right, so by the time, draw a label, yeah, I've done that one, but first, determining the torques around point B, calculate the support forces at each end of the bench. What assumptions have you made? Um, Right, so oh, what we're going to do talks about point B. So it wants to find the talks about point B. So B is going to be our pivot point. So first, we're going to go talks clockwise, and we equal to the talks anti clockwise. And we're going to go around and label things clockwise and anti clockwise. This would make this here is going to be anti clockwise because it'd make the things spin that way. I hope we can see that. Yeah, we will move it down a little bit. This will be uh, clockwise. Um, obviously, this is going to be anti clockwise. That's so going to be anti clockwise. Um, and now we're going to have this torque here, um, which is going to be, uh, so torque is force times distance as well. I'll chuck that up here. Torque equals force times distance. And then remember that force equals, oops, equals mass times acceleration. That should not be, there should be an equal sign, not a not equal sign. Um, right, so the counterclockwise torques, which is just FA, so we're going to have FA, I don't know what that is. Do I know what that is? No, I don't. I'm trying to find that out times the distance from the pivot point, which is 1.5. And that is gonna be equal to all the other torques. So it's that torque, that torque, and that torque. Oof. So we'll start just from here and then we'll work our way across. So this one here, what's half of 1.5? Is that 0.75? Yes, yes it is. So we're gonna have the force, which is gonna be mass times acceleration. So it's gonna be, what's the mass of the bench? Uh, 10 kilograms times 9.8 times the distance from the pivot point, which is 0 0.75, plus player two, which is, thankfully they're all 60 kilos, so six, um, yes, 60 kilos, definitely 60 kilos. 9.8 times 0 0.6, plus uh, the other one's 60 kilos, that makes things very easy, times 0 0.25. Right, I'm gonna add all these together, and as we can see, that equals 573.3 mean. So F of A times 1.5, oh, whoops, times 1.5 equals 573.3. And that's Newton meters, because it's the sum of all the torques. Um, so in other words, F of A is equal to 573.3 divided by 1.5, and that equals 3 
82.2 newtons. Um, and now, support forces each of the bench, uh, right, what else? Um, each end of the bench. So I need to find FB as well. So F total is equal to FA plus FB. In other words, the, the total mass should equal, should be like all the downwards forces should equal all the upwards forces because it's not accelerating downwards or upwards. Um, so what I need to do is I need to get the total mass. It's going to be equal to the total mass. Um, let's put M total times 9.8. Yeah, minus 382.2 because that's FA and that'll give me FB. All right, the total mass is just going to be 260s plus the 10, so it'll give me 130 times 9.8. And as we can see, that gives me 892. So the support force at B is equal to 892 newtons. We can sort of see that. Even these two fellows are real close to B and A is away from A. Um, so you wouldn't expect there'd be much force on A and there'd be quite a lot of force on B. Um, what, like, uh, what do you call it? What assumptions that have we made? Um, geez. That the center of mass is, or does it say? This is massive. Yeah, the only real assumption that I made is a bench is uniform, uniform mass. So I'm just gonna put that there. Um, bench is uniform mass. Bench is uniform mass. Uniform mass. Right, and that's really you always make that assumption. So I don't know why they're asking. Maybe what other assumptions could we make? Um, that looks like a needle. Maybe you could put down that the players at the center of mass is exactly in the center of the person, but it's kind of implied by these distances, so hey, whatever.